Well, welcome back to The Pew, everybody. Yeah. I'm your host, John Edwards, and across the table from me, as always, is my co-host and cohort, Victor Adams. John, it's always good to know we know everything all the time. You know, we're <laughs> like, we're perfect at, like, putting things together, making things work right, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just great to be honest with each other. Yeah, know? it doesn't yeah. sound like we're doing any of that well. <laughs> no. We've been, uh, no. Victor and I were supposed to start recording about an hour ago. Right. Um, I've made some changes to the studio. It's trying to make it more convenient to to uh, get in here and record. You know, we're trying to always right. match up schedules, yours, mine, if Angela can be in here, whoever records us. Mm-hmm. And with Angela in grad school and Deacon Jeff busy a lot, um, it's hard to just find a time where we can all get together. Mm-hmm. So Hector Molina was here uh, a week ago, and he made some suggestions based on his studio. And so now I've got a foot pedal that I'm right. trying to use to switch pictures and all those things. And it's neat technology. You know, hopefully it works, or hopefully my foot works and hits mm-hmm. the right pedal. So if you're watching the show today and, and you see me talking and it's on Victor or you hear me talking and it's on Victor or vice versa, um, don't be too harsh on me. I'm trying to figure it right, out. Right. <laughs> so, but no, it's great to be back in here putting down another episode. And you know, here we are in the what's going to be the fifth you know show of Lent mm-hmm. here, and we're doing this Lenten series on your whole heart. Uh, something I didn't mention last time that I really want to, us to continue thinking about is when we started this. You know, in Joel two twelve, he says, "Return to me with your whole heart," and that's what Lent is about: is trying to give our hearts back to the Lord. Not only for this 40 days, but so that we can have a Lent for our entire lives, right? That that every day of our life is a day where we're giving our hearts back to the Lord. And so the way we wanted to look at doing that instead of just jumping into giving up chocolate or something else, I mean, those sacrifices are great. But to go deeper into our faith is the goal here, mm-hmm. especially during Lent. Um, we wanted to start looking at things that we all struggle with, the seven deadly sins. So we've talked about anger, envy, sloth, greed, right? And now it's another week to talk about another sin. So we're going to be talking about gluttony today. Um, That's another one that a lot of people struggle with. As we said, we all major in in one and minor in another. So we're going to get to talking about that here in just a minute and jump into that. But first, I just wanted to say thank you to Matt Selby and the Archdiocese of Dubuque for having me up for the men's conference this week, past weekend. It was amazing. Uh, Tons of guys there. My buddy Keith Nestor, um, you know, he wound up stepping in for the MC. The MC had something mm-hmm. come up. And so Keith lives around there in Cedar Rapids. And uh, and he stepped in and helped us with the day and got to spend time with him. I did a show, got to go to his house and watch him barbecue. And it was, I told him he was pretty brave trying to barbecue uh, for a guy from the barbecue right. capital of the world. But yeah. it was good stuff, Keith. Good job. And just enjoyed spending time with him and, and his wife, should Estelle. You, should you tell him about the barbecue nachos? Is that awesome? Yeah, thing? no, I didn't I didn't get a yeah. chance to do okay. that. He probably already knows. He gets yeah. around, man. Okay. He's got that rosary crew and he's driving around and yeah. everything. But he's a great guy as well. Life's amazing. It's just a great time to be mm-hmm. with them. So, but I want to say thank you to Matt and all the men that were there for letting me come share my story, share what we're doing about men's ministry. I look forward to working with any of you that want to move forward and working with us to start groups. So again, Matt's a guy I've known since my Cardinal Studio days. Thank you for keeping up with us and thank you for the invitation. It was a, a tremendous honor to be there. Um, just we're about to go on break now, right? Like we've been men's conference, men's conference, men's conference for the last three or four weeks. Now I'm actually off until April 13th. I'll be going back up to Columbus for their leader summit. I'm super excited to be with Matt and Michael and Chris and all those guys up there again at uh, St. Saint, Saint, uh, Paul the Apostle is where the event is. You can go on our website and see it. The website link is there. So you can go and register for it if, it's your, if you're in the Columbus area. A bunch of guys are listening to us now from Columbus. There were before, but now from that mm-hmm. men's conference too. Um, so a lot of guys supporting us. We thank you for that. Excited to be with you, but I'm excited have a break. I'm going to take spring break next week with the kids, go down to dad's, do a little fishing, hang out and get away for a little bit and rest before we come back and start, you know, going to parishes to start men's groups again. So if you want to do that, we still have some open spots in October and in August. If you're looking for uh, a men's group in your parish, if you're looking to start something or revitalize something and you've heard what we're doing and you want to bring it to your parish, you can go to our website at justagownthepew.com. You can fill out our form there. I'll get it. Maggie will get it. We'll go through it. We'll call you. We'll set up time to talk. 
We'll see if it's a good fit for your parish. If it is, then we will start immediately helping you to get this launched in your parish. So if you don't want to wait till 2025, we do have a couple spots in October and August that are open. But you got to act now because there's people on the wait list that we're looking through and going through now too. But we'd love to help you, give you a structure, give you a leadership model, give you a place where your men can be real. Victor, we were in our group um, the other night, mm-hmm. and it was amazing. We, we had a formation night, a lot of guys sharing. It's just – it's irrepra- irreplaceable right. in our lives. I mean, right. I don't know what I would do without it. So if you're a guy out here that's been listening to this and you want one, step up. Let's help, let's let's get together and let us let us help you start one, right? Um, or put us in, in touch with the people in your parish that, that can help us get it going. We love to do this. It's the it's the main part of our mission. It is what we enjoy doing. So, folks, just to get on the pew.com, fill out the form there. Also want to say real quickly, thank you to all our partners in the pew. People keep just signing up every week to, to donate, and we really appreciate that. No amount is too little. You know, some people go, well, I can only give $5 a month. $5 adds mm-hmm. up. You know, what that is is $60 a year. And you get several people giving 60, it adds up and allows us to continue to hire people we need to, people that really can help us grow, talented people, and they're not cheap, right? You, you got to pay for good help. And so to be able to have that, to be able to move forward, we need your donations and your support. So all of you who have been giving to us, thank you. All of you that will consider becoming part in the pews, thank you. You can go to donorbox.org slash pew. That is donorbox.org slash P-E-W pew. Or you can go to just a guy on the pew.com, click the donate or give button up in the top right corner, become a donor there, and, and just know that you're helping a ministry grow and reach more men. Every conference I've been to, Victor, has all of these men mm-hmm. that keep coming up and going, man, like if you hadn't been here, I don't know that I would have gone to confession. If if your ministry hadn't been present, I don't know that I would have had the message that I received today. So it's just a blessing to be able to do this. Um and it's a blessing to be in front of these men. So thank you folks that are giving and helping us continue to be a part of that. So, Victor, I talked about this week. We're going to jump into gluttony. Um, you know, this is one, I, as I said, we all struggle with. Um, gluttony is obviously something that it, it's overindulging. Yeah. It is jumping into things headfirst and going a little too far in a lot of those things. It can be anything in your life. Uh, mostly the church has said that it has to deal with, you know, sustenance, mm-hmm. food and drink. In fact, um, you know, I think this is perfect for Lent because as we talk about our whole heart, one of the pillars of Lent is fasting, right? We have almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. And fasting is the, is the thing that, it, that really directs itself against gluttony. Mm-hmm. And so many of us, we get fat and lazy. And I don't mean fat like obese. I mean just high on the hog, right? Mm -hmm. We start enjoying things in life too much. We get too dialed into comfort. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves being gluttons, you know, like enjoying and overindulging and things like that. And and so, you know, we we went back to the book I did this week that I showed a couple weeks ago, the Sheen book that we've been reading, Archbishop Fulton Sheen, and going through some of this. And he's got a great definition of gluttony. He says, gluttony is the inordinate indulgence in food or drink and may manifest itself either in taking more than is necessary or in taking it at the wrong time or in taking it too luxuriously. It is sinful because reason demands that food and drink be taken for the necessities and conveniences of nature, not for pleasure alone. And this is the thing. We forget about that. We go like, oh, I have this abundance or I've been Mm -hmm. given this much. So, you know, I'm going to continue to eat my fill. And how many plates of food, you know, in the United States do we throw away every night, every meal, where we think, oh, I'm going to go to this buffet or somewhere I'm going to pile my plate. We don't eat half of it. We scrape it off and throw it in the thing because we don't want leftovers. Mm -hmm. And there's people starving on the street each and every day. And this is what Bishop Sheen is talking about. Or Bishop Sheen is talking about here is he's saying, look, like God gives us nourishment. He provides for our needs. But when we start grasping, when we start getting overindulgent, we get greedy, as we talked about in one of the mm-hmm. last episodes with things, then it becomes a problem. It becomes sinful, especially with drink. I mean, look, there's people that find themselves um, being gluttonous in alcohol, like overindulging oftentimes find themselves in addictions. Um, I know that that's something I struggle with still at this time is like, you know, John, it's okay to have a beer. It's not okay to have five beers or six Mm -hmm. beers or seven beers. And if I'm not careful, I can get in that place where, oh, I want to celebrate. I'm just going to have a few beers. And what happens? You start overindulging and then bad things happen, right? Not only in your relationships or the way you feel the next day, but also choices you make. So gluttony is something that can get to all of us. And and this is a, a, a quote from Pope St. Gregory the Great that kind of goes along with this. He says, 
as long as the vice of gluttony has a hold on a man, all that he has done valiantly is forfeited by him. And as long as the belly is unrestrained, all virtue comes to naught. Now, he's talking about, obviously, the belly and food and drink, mm-hmm. but also just like our, our inhibitions right. being unrestrained. And so I don't know about you, Victor, but gluttony has certainly been, uh, as everyone well knows, this right. podcast a problem in my life. Uh, and I'm sure it's something you've dealt with too. Yeah. Well, you know, last time we talked about movies, so I'm going to go literature here. Okay. okay. <laughs> so bear with me. So, so you you know, I, I like science fiction stuff. You know, we, we both talk about Star Wars stuff and so forth. But, um, and I know I said this before because I'm really wanting people to grab this book and like really take time to read it. So, C.S. Lewis wrote a trilogy of science fiction. Okay. Mm-hmm. The first one's Alice Island Planet. The other one's Prelandry, and the other one's Hideous Strength. They all kind of coincide with the battle of evil within man's heart. So anyways, the second book, you know, the gluttony is, when he's talking about gluttony, this is this came to mind. So he goes to, he goes to Venus, okay? This, remember, this was written in 1930, so, you know, space exploration was like nothing. It was all yeah. imagining what's going on. Like, they actually believed, like in the 30s, they actually believed there were people living on Mars. So anyways, uh, he's writing about this, about this whole thing about book two, Prelanger, where he goes to um, Venus, but Venus is in his still in the creation phase. There was hasn't been a fall yet, so he's like in the Garden of Eden on, on this planet, and he finds this fruit that when he eats it, it like it totally like just fills him up and sends a spiritual like alertness, like like love of the Creator. Uh-huh. You know, it's like God God loved us all. That's why he, he made the fruit in you know, for us to eat, to consume, obviously not the tree of knowledge, but the, the fruit for, for us to consume gave us that, that like, love, that yeah. that comfort, that nourishment. So anyways, Ransom, who's a character, took this fruit and he ate it. He's like, because he's from Earth, he felt an amazing sensation over him. Sure. But then in his mind, he said, take 20. He's like, And then he had to stop himself. No, one is all I need because if I get... If I get to this, all I will do is stay here and not do his will. Anyways, the story goes on and on and on, and I yeah. want y'all to read it. But that's the thing is that gluttony is something that keeps you from moving forward. Like you get so comfortable in a certain spot in your life, whether it's a, a, a job of wealth or whatever else, and all you do is become focused on that comfort, then you don't move. You don't move to where God is putting you or placing you or trying to get you. You become a movable object, and you focus only on that, and that then – that that pleasure becomes your god. Yeah, it is. You're 100 percent right. And the thing is, I mean, the reason it's such a big deal and why gluttony is such a big sin because some people may go like, "Well, what's the big deal? What's the mm-hmm. problem? Like you overeat a little bit, or maybe you drink a little bit too much, because you you get accustomed to it. Like one, your body starts to crave those things. You know, you want. 12 cookies instead of two when you give yourself 12 cookies. You want 12 beers when you've given yourself again and again 12 mm-hmm. beers. Like your body starts to move away from things. And what what happens is you start to teach yourself to live in the excess, right? Like there's no boundaries. Mm-hmm. It's like just gimme, gimme, gimme. Like you said, the guy in the book, he's saying, I, I know I'll want 20 of these. Well, that's not a good thing. Right. right is 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 Bishop Sheen was Archbishop Sheen was trying to say he was like we take what's necessary we don't overindulge but that's exactly what the devil wants us to do he wants us to give in to the desires of the flesh and of pleasures and what happens you start to love those things more than you do God and those are what starts to take your attention away that's where you start to to spend your time and and it really what it does is it causes us to ne- causes us to neglect the soul mm-hmm. we choose our flesh over the spirit right because I don't know. I don't always feel fulfillment when I when I right. when I pray. I don't always feel fulfillment when I go to mass. I don't always feel fulfillment when I when I go to rosary. I don't get some feeling or some um, euphoria from that. But I do when I when my body tastes that you know fifth cookie or mm-hmm. that that tub of ice cream or that whiskey that I love so much or that cigarette that 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 I just mm-hmm. you know, crave, and so. We start to give our time and our attention to those things, and we start to lose ourselves in the pursuit of the earthly, of the flesh, of of the um, restraining ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, right. we don't. Yeah. We don't restrain ourselves. Right. We we get caught up in that rapture right. and that feeling, and then mm-hmm. we just chase it. Right. This is why people wind up being addicted. Like why you can't just do one line of cocaine for somebody mm-hmm. who myself did cocaine. You do one, you're like, whoa, that feels amazing, and then you do two, and then you do another one. 
And the next time you come back, you got to do more and you got to do more and you got to do more. But what happened when I found myself in my addiction from being gluttonous and and now cocaine, you shouldn't do ever, right? Right. Like, so, (laughs) but I'm using it as an example. Like you, I turned away from everything. Like my wife and kids became second. My, my job even became second, you know, even though it was supplying my habit, my, uh, my faith certainly became way down the ladder. And that's the danger with this. It's almost like the devil is sitting there and, and we're horses mm-hmm. and he's got a big old strand of carrots that he's got on a cane pole. He's just, you know, bobbing in front of you. And while Jesus is standing there saying, look at me, you can't take your eyes off the carrots. And this is where we find ourselves. I mean, um, Archbishop Fulton Sheen says again, if we become gluttonous about the perishable, we become indignant to the imperishable, right? So like what, what he means by that is, is when we start to choose things that are, that are of this world and things that are going to die and things that aren't good for us and things that aren't everlasting, we become blind or carefree about the things of eternal life. And this is the danger of gluttony. It's why so many people find themselves in this. And they wake up one day and go, well, how did I get so far from the church? Mm-hmm. How did I wind up in this rock bottom place? It's because we've allowed these things to 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 take hold of our lives and become gods in our lives and to control us. You know, I had a friend of mine one time. He smoked forever. And he wound up telling me, he's an older man I used to work with, and he finally quit one day. And I said, well, what happened, man? Like, you you, you sucked down three packs a day, and you were constantly, like, mm-hmm. smoking outside of repair shops. And, and he finally just said, one day it was freezing outside, and I was standing out there, and I watched all these people come in and out of the building. And I was sitting there shivering and shivering and shivering and cold, sitting there putting this little thing in my mouth, trying to smoke as quick as I could so I could get my fix and then go back in until I needed to come back out 15 minutes later. And he said, as I watched all these people walk in that were not controlled by this little bitty rolled up, you know, Mm -hmm. piece of tobacco, then I started going, what am I doing? I've given an inanimate object. I've given something else control over me to the point where I'm willing to come outside and freeze my tail off just to get a hit, to get a fix. And he said in that moment, he just had this kind of God-given grace to go, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he put it down, which was obviously beneficial to his health, his wallet, everything else. But we don't realize that we get that far because this gluttonous thing, it becomes, it's slow, we, we slowly start to become gluttonous right. over time, and it's something that we don't even really realize. It becomes a routine. Yeah. That's the thing. And, and when it becomes routine, then like that gentleman realized that this, is, this has become part of my life, it's taking over my life, and, and this is not good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and gluttony is one of the favorite sins of the devil, mm-hmm. right? It really is. I mean, and it's been since the beginning. I mean, look at the temptation in the garden. What, is, what does Eve say when she looks at it? It looked good to the, eye, mm-hmm. uh, to the eye, and it seemed to be good for food, right? So he always goes to our, to our earthly um, pleasures, right? He's always tempting those things within us that right. want comfort, that want something, that want to be satiated, right? And so he does that with Eve, and she falls for it. It looked good mm-hmm. to the eye, Right, and it was it, it was good. It was food for the stomach, so that was good. It was nourishing, and so he goes through us through our 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 lower um, faculties, right, through our inhibitions, and mm-hmm. so he knows if he can get us tied into these places, that he can pull us away from the Lord. He tried to do the same thing with Jesus, right? When Jesus went in the desert, which here we are in Lent, and that's how we start Lent with him mm-hmm. entering in to be tested. And what is the first thing he tests him with? You know, hey, I know you're hungry. You've been out here for 40 days, and you're sunburned, and you're thirsty, and you're tired. You have to be starving because you're fully God and fully man. Now, I'm paraphrasing. like right. The devil didn't say that. But what is the first thing he does? He goes to him, and he goes, hey, why don't you turn those stones into bread? He tries to appeal to this, this human need, to these earthly desires, right? And what does Jesus say? Like, no. He, he says no to him, and, and, he, and he does every time he tries to tempt him in the desert. But it just goes to show you the devil is always trying to enter into our lives through these things that we seek in comfort. Like, I'm hungry. I want to eat. This is why the church always points us to fasting, right? Like, deny yourself. Separate yourself. Say no to yourself. Learn to govern your body and not let your your body govern you. Because that's really the battle. You have the soul and the body, and one is going to govern the other. Now, the body in itself is not wicked. Mm-hmm. Right, it's not. But if you allow your 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 bodily, your flesh desires to to control your spirit, you're going to wind up in a bad place. It should be our soul. It should be our spirit that is controlling those base desires. And this is where we get into trouble with gluttony. 
is when we fall into that, we forget that and we let other things um, start to take that place. And and you see it in people that are that are away from the faith, mm-hmm. right? Where other things have started, they've tried. They know there's a hole in their heart, right? They're looking for something, and they try to find it in something else. This is one of the core things we tell the men in the men's group: is like, hey, you know, when I got up on stage the last or up on the altar in the last couple of men's conferences, I'll get through with my story. And of course, there's always people that I can tell by looking at them. They're like, well, I don't have some crazy cocaine story. I mean, I don't. That's a gnarly story, but mm-hmm. I don't have issues like that. Well, you got something. Right, you're dealing with your work stress with drinking too much, right? Or or you're dealing with issues in your marriage by just cutting your wife off and shutting her out and going to porn, right? Like, okay, she's not giving me what I want, so I'll just completely set her to the side and go find what I want somewhere else. We all are dealing with something, and that's what happens is we're trying to fill a hole in our hearts with something other than Jesus. And what we do is we wind up self-medicating. That's really what it is. Is like, there's something in me that's missing. There's a mm-hmm. longing. So I'm just going to fill and fill and fill. And again, this is how people overdose. This is how people become alcoholics. This is how people become addicts to porn and everything else or find themselves in constant infidelity right. where somebody goes, well, I'll just step out this one time. And then, you know, five years later, it's it's a hundred times. This is where we find ourselves. And this is exactly what the devil wants is hoping that, we're not going to forge. We're not going to build up and forge our own spiritual lives to where we're simply susceptible to these attacks. This is why we always have to be moving forward in the spiritual life and in governing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's really what the Lord calls us to do. And so, you know, Scripture talks a lot about this, Victor. And I mean, it, I'm going to read a, a few verses here. So I'll slow down so people can really hear them and hear where they're coming from. But this is really what Scripture says about gluttony. One, it says, do not be among wine bibbers or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe them with rags. That's Proverbs 23, 20, 21. What's it saying? Like, if you become gluttonous and you allow yourself, and you're running around with people that are, and you allow yourself become, to, be, to become gluttonous, then you're going to come to poverty. You're going to wind up losing things. That's what it's saying is like the drunkard is going to wind up um, being clothed with rags. Mm-hmm. Right, because you're going to give up everything for the thing that you're now being gluttonous with, right? That you're now addicted to, or that you're overindulging in your life. You're willing to give up anything to have that, whether it's food or women or porn or drugs or whatever it is. So that's Proverbs twenty three twenty through twenty one, Romans twelve one. Paul talks about gluttony a lot, you know, and denying ourselves. He says, "I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God." to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. That's Romans 12, 1. What is he saying there? Like, present yourself, your bodies, your flesh to God as a living sacrifice. What we do to our bodies, how we treat ourselves, how we live matters, right? This is, our bodies are supposed to be holy temples of God. And you know, we're not supposed to be treating them like amusement parks, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that John Mayer song, my body is a wonderland, right? Like, that's not the truth. Your body's a temple. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be respected in the way we treat ourselves matters, right? Because our body, just like everything else we have in life, is a gift from God. So that's Romans 12, 1. Romans 13, 14, Paul goes on to say, Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires, right? Make no room for it. Deny yourself of all these things. And this is what we don't do because we live in a culture to where everything is like, no, do what you want, when you want, how you want, to the amount that you want, right? Live in excess. Have everything that you want times 10, right? Just blow it out of the water. Be crazy. Go overboard because you have your life to live and you're your God and you do all those things. And don't let anybody tell you any different. And what Paul is saying here is no, like, No, make no provisions for any of that nonsense to gratify your flesh, but to spend your time working on your soul, on your spirituality, on your relationship with God. So the final one I'll read here, the final two, is 1 Corinthians 10, 31. He goes on there to say, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And so this is where we have to think in our behaviors like, is me drinking eight beers a night for the glory of God? Or am I falling into some sort of trap? 
Is me overindulging in food all the time, is that glorifying God? Or am I am I giving in to something, a weakness somewhere, and am I self-medicating a wound I haven't mm-hmm. discovered? Right? We have to ask ourselves these questions. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? And then finally, 1 Corinthians 19, 20, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. I mean, that's really the bottom line is we sit here and we act like we're the owners of these vessels that we have. But no, we're stewards of them, just like we're stewards of everything else that the Lord gives us. And he expects us to take care of them and to treat them in a way that's becoming of him. Because especially if you're Catholic and you're receiving the Eucharist every day, you're receiving the Lord into your body. And you don't want to bring him into a place that is that is that is desecrated and not not living up to where a place that the Lord should live. And mm-hmm. and beyond that, like when the Eucharist, I mean, obviously it's it you know, you receive it and then it's in your body and then it's not. But the Holy Spirit's always with you. Right. Right? The Holy Spirit's always within you from the time you were baptized and confirmed and you accepted it. And you don't want to have your body be this place where where one part of the Trinity is living in a junk heap, mm-hmm. living in a in a trash heap or a dumpster pile because of the way that we're treating ourselves. So we have to be really cognizant of these things and listen to what Paul is particularly saying about this stuff. Well, you know, we, we talked about, you know, our our Wednesday nights is when we get together as a group. And we watched, was it Matthew Leonard? Had his, yeah, it was yeah, Matthew yeah. Leonard so, with Science of Sainthood. So, so I don't know what episode it was, but he, really I think what everyone resonated when the group was this, his concept of we are very good at having many rebellions, like, M, like spelled M-I-N-I many rebellions, like small rebellions against God. Yeah. And usually it, it, it finds its way in the gluttonous aspect of our lives. Where it's like, you know, God, I work my butt off, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang back and, and drink this whole bottle of whiskey. You know? Yeah. I mean that's overindulgence, right? Sure. I mean hell that I'm sorry, that might kill you, right? That's you right. Know, yeah. For some people but you're Keith Richards. Yeah, it kill me, it'll kill me for sure. Yeah. But like I say, you know, but there's some there's things that I know that uh, that I can I can have a little bit and be fine with. But then there's those things where you use it as a constant reward mechanism to where you're going, you know, God, you know, I know I probably know this isn't healthy for me, but I deserve this. I deserve and this, And then yeah. when you do that, <laughs> guess what happens? You know, you're pushing God back saying, you don't know me. You can't, you shouldn't really control me in this matter because yeah. this is what I believe I need. And that is a dangerous um, placement of action. Yeah, yeah. you're really, you're giving into pride and right. you're also making agreements with the devil right? because he's the one whispering that in your ear. Right. You deserve this, right? You work hard. You deserve to get hammered, you know? Mm-hmm. I know the Bible says don't get drunk, but you know what? God will forgive you. There's confession. Right. There's all those things. The devil's constantly whispering that in our ear. That's why I always talk about him so much because I want people to see him as a real person. And when you're in these temptations, know that they're not coming from yourself. Mm-hmm. There's somebody whispering them in your ear. You have a choice to listen to them or to turn them off. And in the moment, hopefully we listen to Jesus because you're absolutely right. I feel myself do that all the time. Oh, I've been on the road. I've done all these missions. I poured myself mm-hmm. out. I can't wait to go get on the patio and have a cigar. And you know, I'm going to drink some beers. I don't know. How how many it will be, and then sit there and go, you know, all I did was just talk to people about about living a Christian life. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to drink, but it's not okay. I mean, the, the sin of getting drunk is sitting down like with the intention to get drunk, right. like the knowledge of this is my intention. If you sit down, you drink, and you get in a conversation, and you accidentally didn't realize how much you had, mm-hmm. that's happened, that's innocent. If it if it really is innocent, right? Yeah, that that's one thing. But when you go like, all right, I'm going to this party, or I'm going out here to get hammered tonight, mm-hmm. and I'm getting somebody, to, I'm taking Uber just so I can get hammered, or I'm going to find somebody else to DD and all that stuff so I can get as drunk as I want to. That's gluttony, mm-hmm. right? When I go to this, like, I'm going to go to this buffet and I'm going to sit down, I'm going to eat until I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to eat until I, I'm on the verge of throwing up, mm-hmm. or I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to watch porn until I'm blue in the face. Like, those are gluttonous things. None of those things are good for us. You should never watch porn. You should never intend to get hammered, right? You should never um, intend to overeat any time in your life. But the devil whispers those things and we give in to them because mm-hmm. exactly like you said, exactly like you said, um, this is things that we struggle with. These are things that we deal with, and these are things that we think we deserve. And so that's not of God, and that's not something that we need to really be pouring into. So let's talk a little bit about what Jesus thinks about you know gluttony. Well, first of all, what is his response to it? Self-control, discipline, detachment. That's exactly what it is. I mean, from the moment that he came on the scene in the in the Gospels, right, when his public ministry, what did he do? He went straight out into the desert 
to deny himself for 40 days, Mm -hmm. right? To be found true, to be tested, it says. He goes out and he fasts for 40 days. This is why fasting is so important in our life. And it's also why we don't like it, right? It's not just at Lent. If somebody else goes, well, you know, I've got an issue in you know, if you go to somebody and say, I have an issue in my life, a priest or somebody, well, have you fasted? Have you prayed? Yeah, I've prayed about it. Have you fasted? Well, no, I don't, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's not Lent. We're supposed to fast all the time in our right. lives to find places where we, we we go, you know what, I'm watching too much Netflix. I'm way too into the sports team. I'm this or that. And I need to draw back, right? I need to deny myself. And it's not punishment. It's not trying to be over ascetical. It's just I see issues in my life that are becoming a, a distraction. They're becoming uh, – they're, they're over-absorbing me. They're taking me away from my family and right. from those that I love, especially from God, and I need to step back from it. That's what fasting is about. That's what Jesus tries to show us by going to the desert. It's like we have to, to to deny ourselves and to detach from things. I mean, another example is the first sermon he ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. He talked about detachment. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, 3, right? This is one of the main tenets of the of the Sermon on the Mount. It's telling us to like to be poor in spirit yeah. and to deny yourself things. He also says this in Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Right, These things, these needs that you have, don't worry. God's going to give you enough for them. But don't become so obsessed with them that you think you have to start cultivating and amassing of your own and, 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 sell, and just in, overindulging in these things because life is more than food. Right, You're eventually going to die. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to need any of that stuff anymore because you're going to have the sustenance of me, of God, of Jesus right, for the rest of eternity. And your body is more than clothing and all these things. So treat it with respect. That's what he's saying there. He also talks to us about looking to him to fill us, right? Like these places where we we feel we have to, these hurts, these wounds, we don't even know we have. And we're entering into these places and feeling this great hurt. We go, well, that's why I need to drink so I don't feel this way. Or I need to smoke this so I don't feel this way. Or I need that cigarette to, to get this feeling so I don't feel you know dead inside or whatever it may be. Or I need to watch this porn because I need to feel loved. We need to look to Jesus for all of that stuff. And that's what he says. He goes, everyone who drinks of this water, it's the woman in the well, right? Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never thirst. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. That's John 4, 13 through 15. He also says in John 7, 37, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. This is where we're supposed to find our nourishment. This is where we're supposed to find our our spiritual support and our life-giving water, right? This is what Jesus wants to be for us. So we can't spend our life trying to find joy in 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 in, in stress-free life and and all these things that we look for and all these things of the earth. We can't find them in that. Right. We can only find it in him. And so we've got to start telling ourselves, I'm not going to be a glutton. I'm not going to give in to these things. I'm not going to listen to the devil and the world and the flesh and give in to those desires that Jesus, the Old Testament, Paul especially, is warning us about. I'm going to be different. I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to be mature and tell myself no. Just like I tell my children no when there's something that's not good for them. I have to be able to do the same thing to me so I'm not a hypocrite. Well, you know, words that always comes to, me, to mind about this life is temporary, temporary, temporary. Yeah. You know, and, and some people say, yeah, it's temporary because I want to try everything. Well, that's <laughs> bad too. Right. The temporary I'm talking about is that is that don't put your, your trust in the things of this world because it will fail you every time. Yeah. The trust is the living water, which is Christ. That is, he, he is our sustenance, as you said. He is our nutritional. He is, gives us everything, love, mercy, uh, kindness, Love, it, it's just it goes on and on and on. Yeah. All the benefits from living within when, with Christ's love, and um, you know, for all those those men and women look, you know, out there listening to this, is that gluttony is one of those things where we think it's not a big deal, but it can control our lives pretty dang quickly if we don't are aware of it. Yeah, and it's. I mean, I can tell you. I mean, Victory. Everybody's well aware of my addictions and things in my life, but even now, I have to be careful about overindulging in mm-hmm. alcohol. Because I'll be like, you know what? 
just dig that grave. Let me go. Let me go put on uh, you know Swamp People or Gold Rush or something and watch. Just been watch that and drink. You know, who okay, I'll just drink some beer mm-hmm. until I feel like going to bed, right? And, and here's the thing: I never found anything I was looking for in the bottom of a bottle. All I found was the bottom of another bottle and mm-hmm. another bottle or another line or another cigarette or another video of porn, right? It's it's never enough. It's never going to satiate you. It's never going to fill that hole. So Jesus calls us to that. So to, to him and to to giving everything over to him and letting him be this living water and to to turn away. I mean, the idolatry of gluttony, is, as we've talked about every week, and, and Dr. Bob's uh, workbooks have led us through. And by the way, he texted me and said he's really enjoying the podcast. He's listening, which was a great honor. So, mm-hmm. Bob, thank you for listening. I hope yes. you enjoy this one too. Um, but what, what the idolatry – it is to gluttony is food and drink, right? Mm-hmm. It's just overindulgence in the things of life and the things of the flesh. So we have to have that restraint. So how do we have that? Let's talk about that. Like how do we start defeating gluttony in our lives this Lent for the rest of our life? Well, one, through the virtue of temperance, right? If you look at every sin, there's a virtue that offsets it, right? With pride, it's humility. Um, with greed, it, it's it's generosity, right? Um, with, with this, it's temperance. So for those of you who may not know, and you said things of the world are temporary, mm-hmm. so you combat that with temperance, right? This this virtue that calls you to moderate the attractions of pleasures and provides balance in the use of created goods. That's what the Catechism says about it. It says it ensures the will's mastery over instincts and keeps desires within the limits of what is honorable, right? What is honorable? Like, Lord, I know I can do this and I have free will and I can make these choices, but this isn't the honorable thing. This isn't the thing you desire of me. I, I, you desire of me to control my urges, to control myself, and to be able to moderate myself um, and, and, and choose you over these things. So that's what temperance is. It's basically the virtue of moderation. Mm-hmm. So you can find the definition and more about it at Catechism 1809. But that's the first thing I would say is like, in those moments, call on the virtue of temperance. Like, no. I don't need this. My body, everything may be screaming, and I know that full well from being an addict, that I need this, that I have to have this, that this is my sustenance, that this is my source of life. But really what it is, is an opportunity and a temptation and an opportunity for you to choose the good. Mm -hmm. That's what virtue is, right? Is an opportunity to choose the good and to say, no, I don't have to give into this. I don't have to to submit to my lower um, faculties, to my lower desires. I can raise myself up and lift myself more to God through his grace and his mercy by calling on this gift and this virtue of temperance that he'll give to all of us if we ask for it. So what's the best way to be temperate when it comes to gluttony? Fasting, mm-hmm. right? Start entering fasting in your life. Take one day a week and say, you know what? I'm going to have a protein bar in the morning, not going to eat anything else all day until dinner time, or I'm just going to drink water today. And when you do it, don't complain and, and mumble and grumble. Actually offer it up to the Lord mm-hmm. for somebody else's pain, for something you may be struggling with, for your work, whatever it is. Like, But but sit there and, and be temperate through fasting. It's a pillar of Lent, but it needs to be a pillar of our life. Three, set limits for yourself and offer up sacrifices to God, right? So like, I'm going to set limits on this. I'm not going to, I'm going out with my buddies. I know we're going to drink because we always drink. I'm going to have two, right? I'm going to have two over a course of this amount of time. Set limits for yourself and don't pass them. Victor, you're so good about that. You come over here and there's some of us that, man, we're, we're, there are no limits. We're just drinking until it's time to go home, which is not safe for anybody. But you're always like, nope, I'm driving. I brought you know this many beers. I'm going to drink two of them and over the course of three hours, and I'm going home. Something I've always admired about you. So set limits and stick to them. Four, look at your body as a temple, right? As Jesus said, as St. Paul said, like your body is a temple of God. Respect it and treat it that way. Get rid of the whole my body's an amusement park for me to do with mm-hmm. what I want or my body's a wonderland. That's garbage. Look at it as like the Lord resides in me, and I would not – Treat him like this if he was in front of me. And so he's always in front of me. Mm -hmm. So keep that mindset that the Lord is not off on some cloud somewhere, not paying attention to what you're doing. He's a part of your life each and every day. So go through your life that way, that he's standing there in front of you all the time watching you. Five, seek help if 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 you have serious issues. Like if you're really struggling, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, okay, I hear you in temperance, but I'm an alcoholic or I'm a drug addict or I'm addicted to porn, then it's time to go see somebody about it. It's time to be honest and open up in your life because if you've let yourself get that far through the sin of gluttony and you can't help yourself, then there's only a couple of ways this is going to end. Right. You hit rock bottom, you die, you possibly take somebody else with you, or 
you turn around and you say, Jesus, I need your help, mm -hmm. and I need somebody else's help, and you do something about it. You know, eventually I had to go to rehab. I, you know, I had a choice. The, the court didn't make me do it, but I said, I want my wife, I want my family, I want to be rid of this stuff. So I checked myself into rehab and went through an outpatient program. Mm -hmm. And that's what you wind up having to do. You cannot do this on your own. If you've given in to gluttony that much, and you've just overindulged so much that you've now formed an addiction, then you've got to look first and foremost to God, surrender it, and then go find people in this world that he's given the gift to help you with it. So, folks, that's it. Like, this is the thing, last thing I'll say that she, Sheen says that really sums this up. A glutton does not eat to live. He lives to eat. Whether that's drinking, eating, porn, whatever it is in your life, stop letting it control your life. Be somebody who's going to give this to the Lord, that you're going to take the power back in your life, and you're going to move forward becoming a free person who isn't a slave to the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's the hope for all of us. So, Victor, let's take this to prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, the world is constantly becoming a place that celebrates living for oneself and taking everything to the extreme. The devil is always tempting us to become gluttons who overindulge in the pleasures of the world and the flesh. Help us to remember that the life of a true Christian is one of self-control and temperance. And Father, whenever we see ourselves getting out of control and giving too much of ourselves to something other than you, remind us that the only thing worth filling ourselves with is you. In the name, in the name of the, the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, amen. amen.